Here I have my 1992 Mazda MX-5 Miata. Uh, nice little yellow car that I've had for several years. It's got about 121,000 kilometers on it now and of course everybody tells me it's time to replace the timing belt and gears and while I'm in there to replace the water pump as well. Nothing's leaking, nothing's broken, it still runs really nicely. Uh, it's just not likely ever been done before. So time to replace all of that. Well, we gotta start somewhere. So here we are underneath the car at the drain plug for the radiator. And it's a, a little plastic uh, plug. It's got a flathead screwdriver slot in it. And it's even got a 1932nd size. That's got to be the oddest size. It isn't metric and it isn't a real common standard size. But fortunately you can get at it with a, a flathead screwdriver anyway. So it isn't coming out very fast right at the beginning. And that's because I haven't removed the radiator cap. But we'll do that and you'll see that it starts to come out a little bit quicker. So if it's coming out too quick, all you do is you put the cap back on and it'll slow down for you. My car has the uh, plastic cover underneath to keep all the uh, gravel and whatnot from flying up and hitting in your engine. So uh, fortunately, there's a little hole in the bottom there where the antifreeze can be drained easily. So while the uh, radiator is just finishing draining, let's take a look at a couple of other things we need to disconnect. So here is the connection for the fan. So I'll disconnect that in a second. And then also just very near that, let's see if I can get this camera turned around. Uh, right in there you can just see one bolt that holds the uh, radiator to the uh, framework of the car. And over here on the other side, underneath, there we go, there's one more. So there is another bolt that's holding it down. And if I look way down uh, at the bottom, there is no bolt holding that. So once I get the top bolts uh, removed, the radiator is going to pull straight out. Of course, I've got to remove the hose clamp, which is right there. And there is a lower hose which is way over on the other side, but uh, we'll probably find that in a minute when I go to disconnect some other things. Actually, in order to get at the uh, lower rad hose, I think I'm going to start also by taking off some of the air ducting on the front of the engine. I now have the radiator out, and it was a little more awkward than I was anticipating because, of course, I did not take off the bottom shield and that made it a little more awkward to remove the lower rad hose. The lower rad hose is fastened onto a pipe right about there. And so it was easier to take it off the pipe and then uh, move the hose around to get past the front sway bar. But it's out and uh, the radiator looks in good shape. There you have it. The front of the engine is out ready to work on now. So I can, uh, I can use the camera a lot easier now than I could have with the radiator in there. We are now uh, kind of into the engine and we're taking a look at the belt. Uh, I removed the uh, pulleys uh, off the front here, off the front of the water pump. And you can see it's missing there and that allowed me to remove the belt. And I took the bolts out of the bottom pulley but I still have not yet removed the, the center crank bolt. Cover is off, and uh, the rear plug had a little bit of oil running down in there, and that of course means that that particular se uh, section of the gasket wasn't sealing very well. So, of course, we're going to have to uh, install a new cover gasket on there. There we are. We're looking down into the top of the engine, and now we've got to start removing some covers off the front, and it, uh, a lot of other little trappings just in order to get at the timing belt. Well, I was thinking that the uh, the crank bolt actually uh, put some pressure on the front pulley, but it's only the four small uh, 12 millimeter, I think it was 12, 12 or 10 millimeter bolts that held that on. So here I am, I've got a front, 
front pulley assembly that just comes right off. And of course this little retainer was in there before the bolts. So at last we've got all the plastic covers off the front. So what I want to do is I want to take a look at how tight my belts were. And without playing with any of the tension. So not particularly tight. They're actually a little bit loose. Wouldn't call them super tight, so it's a good thing. I'm starting to replace it. It's now time to try and see if we can get that uh, front crank bolt loose off this engine. So it's taken me a little while to make my homemade makeshift tool that fits on the front of the crank. Oh, very nice, very nice. That makes me feel very good. <coughs> that. Okay, we'll just spin this off. Whoop, that is so loose. Okay. I was quite worried about that, but you know what? It really worked out well. Uh, there's no way that I would have got that if I had not made that homemade tool. So let's look at those threads. Actually quite good. Nothing wrong there. There's no rust. Nothing like that. So that's really great. Anyway, let's take a look at that homemade tool that I made. Uh, I'm not sure if I uh, really should have done that, but I left it lean up against the alternator pulley, which, you know, I really didn't feel a whole lot of pressure at all. Uh, it worked really well. And let's take a look at the front of it. There it is there. And two bolts. I did not use the original bolts that came out of there. I had a couple of other metric, uh, correct metric thread, and it uh, threaded in. I did not want to bend or damage the original bolts at all. Now I want to take a look inside there and just see if there's any damage. That I can see to begin with. Whoa! And I'm not sure that I see any. Shine some light in there. No, nope. looks good. But uh, we'll know here in a little bit once we pull that gear right out of there. So what I'm going to do now before I take that apart is I'm going to realign everything. I'm going to rotate the crankshaft back to top dead center number one and rotate the cam sprockets back up where they were because I changed a whole lot of stuff when I was trying to trying to take out the uh, the front crank bolt. Okay, this is where we left off. I just took the, uh, the front crank bolt out of the front of the crank and I'm going to take the flange off. Yep. Come on, there we go. So the flange comes off. I'm looking at the back of it. Okay. And this key, sticking way out. And uh, I'm going to take it right out just to see how long it is because I've never been in here before and I have no idea how long that key is supposed to be. Hmm, really wasn't in that far. By the way, take a look at the front of that key. Uh, let's see if we can get that. You can see, let's put it in my hand. You can see that there's a bit of a chamfer on that bottom corner. That slight bevel had better be installed so that it's down into the center of the crank. If I install that the other way, uh, it's not going to fit in there correctly, and I'm going to guarantee myself to have major problems. Anyway, back that goes. Okay, I felt it hit the back and hit the bottom. I love that uh, the look of the quality of that crank. There's absolutely no wear, and it looks great in, in that keyway. So I am extremely happy at this point. There is an idler pulley on this side, and it's got a spring connected to it, so that's the tensioner. And there's an idler pulley on the other side, right there, but it's just 
spinning on a fixed pivot. So I'm going to loosen up this one. That uh, 3 8 ratchet was just a little bit small for the amount of torque required, so I just put a half inch drive socket. There we go. That was uh, tightened up by a monster. Okay. Whoa, what's that? Just freaked myself out. Uh, I'm looking at liquid down there and I'm going, no, please. Actually, that's uh, from my uh, penetrating fluid. Boy, oh boy, I thought that was oil and I was going to have to replace the front gasket or something. So this bolt I loosened and now that allows me to slide this this tensioner back and I am going to pull the belt off the top I think hmm no I'm gonna pull the belt right off the tensioner there we go somebody got smarter suddenly I hope Okay, so now the belt's loose. Uh, my camshaft just rotated up top. I saw that. The exhaust cam did not rotate. And... Okay, so obviously I'm not gonna pull the belt up past there because I've got the uh, water piping going on. So I'll get that out in a minute. Now. The next thing I want to do, I'm going to have to set down this other second camera, but the next thing I want to do is i got to start unbolting a lot of bolts in here. Top cover, there's a top cover in behind here, that's going to have to get loosened. Uh, it looks like that's going to bother my water pump. This fits in there. Here's new water pump. And, yep. Yeah. It looks like the same one, so that large hole there is where the fixed pivot goes. The other one there is where the sliding tensioner uh, idler pulley goes. That pin there is for the spring. And uh, all the other bits and pieces are going to bolt on. On the top of the water pump, flip that over, there's a rubber seal that just keeps dust out of the uh, belt area. And um, I decided that because of that thing, I may not get it back in correctly. So I decided to take the upper cover off. Of course, that meant taking off the two cam gears on the top as well, too. Oh, well. And, of course, here's the system with the two uh, top gears off. And here's the new pump in position. Everything's bolted back together as far as the new pump goes. And uh, we are just about ready to go. Well, the new belt is on. And most of the things are back together. Now, I just want to do a little bit of uh, show and tell before I cover everything up. The camshaft sprockets had to be taken off because I wanted to uh, take this cover out from underneath there in order to uh, more easily work on the water pump. So, because those had to come off, uh, these two bolts need to be torqued down. So the specs on that, if you look that up, that has a range of 37 to 44 foot-pounds. So that gets torqued down. Uh, also, these two uh, bolts that hold down the tensioner and the idler need to be torqued down or they're going to come out at some future time. So again, same torque on that. They're actually the same size bolt, but 37 to 44 foot-pounds. So you get out your torque wrench and you torque those down as well. Make sure that you have uh, all of the cogs and marks lined up correctly on the timing belt. And I've gone through that many times just to be sure. Followed all of the instructions in the uh, manual or the the book that comes with the new timing belt uh, by the way mine was from gates uh, several companies uh, make the the belt uh, the gates talks about uh, uh, rotating it over several times and 
then setting it at a certain location, then loosening off the tensioner, and then tightening up the tensioner, and rotating it over a, almost two more turns, and then checking the, the belt tension with a spring weight. And of course, the belt tension was actually measured right up here. So I put a, a spring uh, uh, scale on there and pulled up on the belt and measured the deflection. Now comes the time to uh, torque your front crank bolt back in again. I put my special tool back on and I've got it partially tight. I just want to check it here. We are so close to running that we uh, I can almost taste it. So here goes new intake gasket on the top there. The old one was crushed and of course when we took it apart you remember that uh, there was oil running down the back spark plug hole. So there really doesn't need to be a lot of torque after it bottoms out. Not like you're squeezing cork or something like that. Okay, that's wonderful. That's on. Next two bolts, or the last two bolts that I have in my bolt bin, are the two that held the coil on the back. So we had 10 millimeter for the rocker cover, and this will be 12 millimeter bolt again going back together for the coil tower. We've got four plug wires to put in here. started up. So I had a little bit of noisy lifter at the beginning and of course within a couple of seconds all that new oil went right through, pressurized the system and I'm up and going. Okay, let's close that hood. <laughs> 